Hello friends! First of all, I'm not a doctor. I want to tell you about some tools you can use to reduce liver toxicity in your lifestyle. I want you to know that there are two forms of liver issues we're mainly concerned about. One is liver cancer, the most famous of which is hepatocellular carcinoma. And the second one is the progression of liver disease that is very common in America right now today, which is NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, followed by NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, followed by fibrosis leading to cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is the buildup of scar tissue in the liver. So first of all, you want to uh, have little iron in your diet. And you also want to get rid of the iron in your body as much as you can. So phlebotomies are the main tool that you can use here. Iron levels have been shown to have a causal effect on the development of NAFLD, the fatty liver disease. Second of all, you want to make sure you have enough choline in your diet. Phosphatidylcholine is absolutely essential for the export of fat from the liver. And being choline deficient will directly cause NAFLD. This was shown from the early 90s and I've discussed this many times before. Next, you want to have enough zinc. Zinc does not only have an anti antioxidant effect, but it also reduces ferritin, which is blood levels of iron, as well as reduces hepatic fibrosis. Fibrosis is the laying down of collagen in your liver, which leads to cirrhosis eventually. The next thing you want to do is take a supplemental bile acid. Now, the main one studied is Utka, because Utka is the main line treatment for liver cirrhosis. When alcoholics get cirrhosis, the, main, the only thing that's approved for it is Utka, which is a bile acid. Now, we in supplemental form commonly find Tutka. Tutka is almost it could be, it's arguable which one is more effective. There's some research that shows that Tatka may have advantages and Atka may also have advantages. Personally, I would take Tatka and not underestimate the power of it. Finally, I would take antioxidants on a daily basis. And the reason why I would take these antioxidants, and by the way, some of these things are not technically antioxidants, but they produce an antioxidant effect in the body. The reason why I would do this is that a lot of the liver damage comes from oxidative stress in the form of reactive oxygen species at the hepatocyte in the liver. So some of these things can reduce that oxidative stress on the liver. First of all, melatonin. Per milligram, melatonin is more powerful as an antioxidant than vitamin C, than vitamin E, and then even glutathione, which is the liver's main antioxidant. Of course, we take a much lower intakes of melatonin than other antioxidants, but still, it's extremely powerful. What's unique about it, it doesn't just disable reactive oxygen species, but it does the same to reactive nitrogen species, which is the N here. It increases glutathione, which is the GSH, in the body, and it is shown to be specifically hepatoprotective in studies. Second of all, turmeric, or any curcuminoids in general. Turmeric has been shown to be hepatoprotective and nephroprotective, which means it protects your kidneys as well. A lot of these things are actually also nephroprotective. I haven't written that for all of them, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. Milk thistle reduces reactive oxygen species in the body, increases glutathione, and has an antifibrotic effect, which means it reduces the formation of um, collagen on the liver. Vitamin E has been shown to be effective, one of the few tools that has been shown to be effective in treating non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Very rare, makes it a good reason to include it. Although, by the way, there is some evidence that it, it sometimes it doesn't attenuate liver damage, but anyway. Mito Q, my favorite form of coenzyme Q10 and the most studied form of coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10, by the way, mainly found in animal hearts from animals. Coenzyme Q10 is an antioxidant as well, but Mito Q is very well studied and it has been shown to be hepatoprotective for people who have hepatitis C, which is one of the leading uh, causes for liver degeneration. Uh, next, we have N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine, NAC, donates cysteine to glutathione in the synthesis of glutathione, and in that method, it increases glutathione in the body. It's been shown to be particularly hepatoprotective in clinical studies. Vitamin C has been shown to be hepatoprotective, and it's been shown to be effective in the treatment of NASH, but in rodent studies. Still interesting and useful to use. Alpha lipoic acid has been shown to have an antifibrotic effect, which is rare, as you can see, only a couple of them have had that, which means it reduces fibrosis again at the liver, which is that thing that happens with building up of collagen before cirrhosis occurs. And it's been shown to protect against choline deficiency. As I said before, choline deficiency directly causes the stages of liver disease. Quercetin is a plant phenol. Again, it's been shown to be a hepatoprotective and it has some other benefits and is very good to be included. Now, what I would tell you guys, if you are in a lifestyle, either you're drinking a lot or you're taking androgenic anabolic steroids or you're taking a lot of Tylenol, you want to include these principles in your daily life to reduce this, the damage that you're doing to your liver. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you good luck on your health journey.